This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by Ting. All right, let's get our SSH file system set up in Linux, huh? Mm. Uh, Windows. No, we'll do Linux first, then you can do Windows I don't know. stuff. Windows is easier. This is easier. It's like three really? commands. What? Max. Paul, <laughs> you know we don't do any Max stuff on this show unless you want to come on the show. Max. Huh? Just kidding. Yeah. All right, show us. All right. Show we'll us get how this. you do it. Since this is a different server, I'm going to have to, just like we did in the previous week, set up uh, my key pairs. Yes. So I'm going to show you a real quick and easy way to do that all on one line. Okay. Uh, a lot easier than you going through nano and copying yeah. and pasting your stuff. <laughs> so in this case, I'll do my SSH key gen just like before, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to semicolon and then run another command all on the same line. Stringing commands! Yay! I and just learned about that. This one is called SSH copy ID, and it copies your authorized file too over to the proper place. Okay. All for you. You don't have to think about it. In this case, you just have to give it the username at the host. And then, lastly, I'm going to go ahead and SSH over to it. Okay. <clears throat> all right. And so with all of that, the first thing it's going to do is be like, hey, where do you want to save the key? Go with the defaults. Mm -hmm. Of course. Passphrase. I'm going to be naughty right here and hit enter <gasps> twice. Bad. Don't do that because now the only thing getting you logged onto the server is this private key file and you're going to want something a little bit more secure, like mm -hmm. a uh, passphrase in addition to it. But of make course. things easy and to show you what that might be like. Uh, I get my key fingerprint just like before. And I'm all like, yeah, that's the server I think it is. So it adds it to my known hosts. I log in, and that's it. So that first oh. time I logged in, that was so that it could copy the .ssh slash authorized key file. And there we are. And now I'm on my, uh, my Linux server up here in the cloud. And if I ls, I can see I've got all my files here. OK, stupid question. Mm -hmm. This is free? Well, of course. Yeah, it's Linux. I hate you. But get this, um, this is just me interacting with the shell like I normally would. So like yeah, I can. Yeah, I want a GUI. Okay. Well, the idea here is. I you need know, some pretty pictures here. <laughs> I get a shell, and I can you know less. I, I can work with the files like uh, I can take a look at a script, hack tip 0009, whatever script, and now I can like now you, have the script. you know read through this file, and there you go, right? Uh, likewise, I could. Use nano and all mm -hmm. those other fun text tools, except what you want to do text tools. is you want to be able to like open up your application thing, go to Office and open Office and yeah. mess with stuff that way. Yeah. Well, what we're going to do now that we have this SSH session open is we're going to set up our SSHFS. So mm. let me get this going on here. And so the first thing that we're going to need to do in order to connect to our SSHFS is to do a sudo apt get install sshfs and that's going to you know vary depending on maybe you use yum maybe you use pacman mm -hmm. whatever it may be okay your distros i use debian based stuff so for me it's apt get and it just goes ahead grabs that real quick sets it up installs it and there we go next thing you need to do is you actually need to set your user to be a you uh, to be a member of the f use or fuse group right okay and in this case it's sudo g pass wd, tack a to add. And in this case, I could type out my name, Darren, or you could use the variable dollar sign user in all caps. Mm -hmm. and then, so it has to match what you have on here. Right. OK. And the, I like using the variable because then, like, you know, if I just say use dollar user, right. I can tell anyone and then they'll run it, yeah. you know. Um, and it'll be right for them. And then we add me to the uh, fuse uh, group. So by doing that, what it does is says adding user Darren to fuse group. Because there's permissions involved. And if mm -hmm. I log out, I'm going to exit this, open it again. All right. And now I am uh, logged back on. And I can go ahead and create a new directory here. I'm going to make directory coconut. So if, if I go into coconut now and look around, I've got nothing, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. This is where the fun part comes in. Since I'm already SSH'd over to my, uh, my server over there, all I need to do is issue SSHFS with attack O and set ID map to equal user. OK. And then next, I say my username, in this case, Ardwolf, at my host name, coconut.hack5.org. And then um, I give it the direct, uh, then a colon for where I want to mount. So if you do a colon in this mm -hmm. case, it's going to be my home. If I go back over here to my VPS and I type PWD, 
you'll see I'm in slash home slash Ardwolf. Okay. That's what that colon is. Okay. I could say slash root mm -hmm. or slash Etsy. I don't have permission to do those <laughs> things. So I'm just going to go with colon because as I okay. see when I ls, that's where all of my files are. So back over here in my command, last thing I do is after specifying my username at my host and then colon for my home, I'm going to say uh, the directory where I want to mount that. And in this case, since I created that directory called coconut in my home folder, I can specify tilde as a shortcut for home slash coconut, hit enter, and that's it. There's nothing more nice. to it. And now if I go back to coconut and ls, Mm -hmm. Look at that. Oh, uh, awesome. All those files are there. They're right there. Yep, including That's so cool. Uh, my doc.txt.asc. My uh, we'll get into that later, but I have my encrypted stuff there as well as my unencrypted ASCII text files and I can easily mount this now. Um, and you can imagine this could be something very easy to script. Mm -hmm. If I didn't want if I was done with this now, I didn't want to use it anymore. You do um, uh, fuse um, I think it's fuse mount Pack U and then the directory coconut. Um, yeah. Oh, F user mount. Sorry. There we go. Sorry. It's F user mount. Tack U. And so anyway, that now if I go to coconut folder and LS, you'll see that there's nothing in there. Mm -hmm. So that is how you mount and unmount very quickly. I will also add that you probably want to do this. If you go into your .ssh, you'll see I've just got my known host file and my my uh, public and private keys. I also want to create a new file called config mm -hmm. and I want to put this string into it. So I'm just going to create this easily by echoing it into the command line and redirecting it. I want to say server live interval 60 and then send that into config. So this says server alive interval 60. Does that mean you're going to stay connected to your server? Yes. Just and it's like, going to retry every 60, sec 60 minutes? Yeah, every 60, every, every 60 seconds it's going to say in the packet, this is, hey, let's stay alive. Nice. Just like I configured my server yes. in last week's episode to send uh, to the client so every 60 seconds. Uh, this way I've got, I've got it done both ways. Huh. And, um, I wonder if I can do that. And then the other thing would be to do uh, count max. And in this case, I'm going to say zero because I want it to go infinitely mm -hmm. to config. And if I cat config now. You can see there it is. Nice. Oh, and that's okay. it. That's yeah, all there is to easy. it. So if you already have SSH set up, as you should if you're following along from last week, it's really just apps get install SSHFS and then that SSHFS command with where you want to mount. Okay. Yeah, I know. that was easy. Yeah. We took a long way there, but hey, <laughs> wasn't that cool? Now stay tuned because in just a bit, Shannon's going to be setting up SSHFS clients in Windows. First, let's take a quick break. By now you've heard us talk about Ting. They're the sensible alternative to the crazy contracts that you're gonna find at the major cell phone carriers. Well, their customer first approach to service and their pricing model is a breath of fresh air. Simply pay for what you use. Minutes, messages, megabytes, they're all billed separately. In fact, you hardly even have to consider what plan to choose since Ting will automatically bump you up or down depending on what you use. So stop paying for service that you aren't using or getting penalized for using too much. In fact, if if you're stuck in one of those lame contracts, fear not. For the entire month of May, Ting is running a dump your contract promotion where they'll pay up to $300 in early termination fees to one lucky winner every day. Head over to ting.com slash fact5 to learn more and if you sign up through this URL, you'll get a $75 credit onto your first month of service. Again, that's ting.com slash hack5.